So, yes, who's the next one? Thank you very much for that. And actually, I'd like to put one question to you. Something very basic, but I think a lot of people would like to have some clarification on. You know, most Christians, Christians as a whole, they believe that salvation only comes through the, the blood of Jesus Christ. Since Christ, as we know, as an example, it is in the Bible that he was a Jew and he originally was brought up, educated by a Jewish family, and ever, he was, in every essence, he was a Jewish man, Jewish God. And since, in my reading of the Bible, also, I don't find any evidence of the Christian idea of salvation, that salvation only comes through the, the blood of Jesus Christ. How does the idea of salvation relate the Christian idea of salvation, which is connected directly with the crucifixion of Christ, how does it re relate to the Jewish idea of salvation and to the Muslim idea of salvation? How do they three uh, correlate? How are they correlated? You see, the, the, the Jewish and the Christian, uh, the Jewish and the Muslim idea about coming right with God is believe in God and do good deeds. You have to pay for your sins. Anybody? Everybody. You pay for your own sins. Nobody pays for you. You take the bitter medicine yourself. If you are sick, you take the medicine. If you've got a rotten appendix, you be operated. Not somebody else because he's his whole. This is the law of God for all eternity. And it doesn't change. The law of God doesn't change. That you are personally responsible for your action. In the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, God speaks. He says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Anybody who commits a crime, sins, he shall perish. Like this we all die. But meaning spiritually, he will be cut off. The one that sins, the soul that sins, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Son means we are the children. Father, Adam, he committed a mistake. And we, his children, are not responsible for what happened to him, what he did. He pays for his, you pay for yours. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Whatever his children are doing today, sons of Adam, like last June, 300,000 sodomites, they gathered in San Francisco on a pilgrimage, led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. God will not ask Adam, look at your children. See what they're doing, rubbish. No, no. Poor Adam, he will be safe from that. See? Neither shall the father be the iniquity of the, iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Meaning whatever the good thing the good man does, he will get his fruits, rewards. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever the evil man does, he will have to pay the price. But if the wicked, this is the way of salvation. But if the wicked will turn from all the sin that he has committed, means repent. And do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. That is salvation in Judaism, that is salvation in Islam, and also in the teaching of Christ. But if the followers, they choose an easy way, that is their business. But it is not the teaching of Christ. Jesus Christ, he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, most certainly I am telling you, except your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. And I'm asking, how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? You've got to keep the laws and the commandments, believe in God, and do good deeds. James, in the book in the New Testament, says, faith without action is dead. What is the proof of your faith that you believe? Your actions. How do I know that you believe? Your actions. Like this, you can claim anything. I can say anything. You can say anything. What is the proof? Action. Faith without action is dead. But there are people, missionaries, preachers, like Jimmy Swaggart. This man, Jimmy Swaggart. Oh, you see this poster is there. Jimmy Swaggart. I had a debate with him. He has written some more than 30 books. Like this. The Error of the Jesus Only Doctrine. Roman Catholicism. The Preacher. Pornography, Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah, incest, homosexuality, alcohol. He's written more than 30 books. Now he says that you don't have to do good deeds to earn him. He says Christ paid the price. And there are a lot of preachers now that talk like You don't have to do anything to get heaven. You just believe that Christ died for your sins and salvation is yours. 
Because he says, if you have to do good deeds with that belief, he said the good that sacrifice was redundant. Use he paid the full price. Now you're going to do says I'm going to pray five times a day, I'm going to fast, I'm going to abstain from dancing and drinking. So that will not save you. What is going to save you is that you believe that Christ died for your sins, he paid the full price, you don't have to do anything. But he says good work will come by itself. They will come by itself, he says. Then he cries, he says there are 11 million drunkards. They call them problem drinkers in America. 11 million drunkards. You know, they call them problem drinkers. They don't call them drunkards. They say they are problem drinkers. And he says there are 50, 44 million heavy drinkers in America. And he said, I make no distinction between the two. To me, they are the same. That means 55 million drunkards, according to Jimmy Swagger. 55 million. Where is this? This belief of yours. See? Then he talks about the preachers, the people who are preaching. They themselves, it's the preachers. This is a book called The Preacher. He talks about the preachers. He's a preacher himself, but he's talking about the other preachers. He says, you know the preacher says, I went to the bank, some business, on some business, to the manager. Maybe you wanted an overdraft. So the manager is, knowing he's a preacher, he says, you know who are the worst payers? He says, no. He says, three P's, P, P, P. He says, preachers, painters, and prostitutes. They are the worst payers. This is his book, The Preacher. Look, I don't know, if some Christian bookshop you'll be able to buy it here. Either. Three P's, you know, P, P, P. You haven't got it in Arabic, you've got some B, B, B. It's P, P, P. <laughs> Preachers, painters, and prostitutes. So, Swagat says, Swagat says, he said, I don't know about the painters and the prostitutes, but I do know about the preachers, that it is true. So, what is this? You know, they die for your sins, he says, look, it's not changing your life. You've got to act. Your actions will prove your faith. This is just talking, you know, we are living in another world. I sin no more. This is the man tells you, I sin no more. He said, the spirit permeates in me. I've got the spirit. He said, permeates the whole of your beings. There's no way in empty space, he says, no. Spirit must fill everything, every molecule of yours. It fills up. So I said, there's no place for the devil. He says, no, there's no place for the devil. I said, you can't be tempted. He says, no. He's consistent. You see, if the spirit permits you, there's no place for the devil, then you can't be tempted. He says, no. Then I said, you are greater than your own Lord Jesus. You know, Jesus was tempted by the devil. You remember? This is taken up to a high mountain, you will show in the kingdom of the world, he says, come on, you worship me and I'll make you master. He was tempted by the devil, and you can't be tempted until you're greater than your own God. Congratulations. He said, no, 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 I can't be tempted. I said, then the spirit is not in you. I don't. No, no, this is a type of just talk, empty talk. Faith without action is dead. In Islam, in Judaism, and in the teaching of Christ. You have to prove your faith by your action. I, uh, if you stand up, I think they can picture you. Yes. I just wanted to correct you at one point and then answer your second question. Yes. First of all, there were six million Jews that died in World War II. And they died because they didn't want to believe that they were being prosecuted by their own kind, prosecuting me by their own nationality. When Hitler during 42, when Hitler during 37, after he came to power in 34 or 33, he started with his purge. He started to eliminate the Jews, but the Jews did not want to believe that their own kind were eliminating them. Therefore, they died because of that. That that is a fact, and I want to correct it. It's not a possibility, but it's a fact. The second point I want to ask is that uh, in Judith, I was adopted by Jewish parents, but I'm Muslim. I'm a Muslim. Uh, when the Jew, Jewish faith consider father, when they consider Moses as father, they're speaking of Moses as a guidance. And I think in Islam also for the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad, many people look up to Muhammad as a father, but they look up to God as the ultimate. Muhammad is directed the individual as Moses directs the tribe, the Israelite. 
the Israel tribes. And I want to, my point is, uh, there's a difference between two fathers. There's a father who gives birth to his own child, and there's a father God, and then there's another father, and there's three types. You can definition of father, there's another father who leads the individual, who leads the, the child from birth, or leads the individual that needs guidance. And I think that should be clarified. I'm sorry, but I don't think you clarified the point enough. I, was, I respect your program, and I think you, you're an excellent lecturer, but I would like you to clarify that point for me on father. Have you got the question? <coughs> Not really. You see, I don't know whether I'm going to fumble with this. Uh, you see, people call him Moses' father. Uh, call him Muhammad father. I don't know, I didn't hear anybody call him Muhammad father. I didn't at any time. Nor did I hear in my environment anybody call him father. But father in the sense that, you know, he is showed us the way and all that. But he's not being used. We say he's Rasulullah, he's the messenger of God, you know, Habibullah, Habibullah, all that. But that we don't call him Abba. No, you know. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know. 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 I don't Father mean for me. Father is a guidance. Father does not normally mean the father that gave me birth. Okay, okay. Or God. Father also means an individual that guides me right. in the proper direction. But you see, yes, the father. You see, since this term has created certain mischief, it has created certain mischief, and it's creating ideas in people's minds that God Almighty physically got Jesus. Jesus is the only begotten Son. Have you heard that before? All the time. Right. So if he's begotten. Begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. Now when you use terms like that, you see the term, I said, look, maybe you didn't mean that. But the, by the, the way you're using the term now, it creates so many people in the back, in the, in the third world, they're taking these things literally. So to save you from falling into the pit, in Islam you are saying, he says, don't call him father, call him Rabb, don't call him Abba. Like this word, I was talking about those Sodomites in San Francisco just now. You remember? Yes. You call them gays. You call them gay. It's a beautiful word. Gay. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in my life, you see, when I went to school, I was learning a poem. They taught me at school. All the children were learning together. So gentle lords and ladies, gay on the mountain down the day. <laughs> You know, gay. He's happy and gay. And everybody, beautiful word, gay, happy and gay. And I'm carrying on, I'm growing up, growing up. And now I'm maybe about 20, 25, maybe around about 30. I'm reading the newspapers talking about gay. I'm puzzled. What is this gay? Is it gay? What? You know, some, something fishy there, you know, that I think about gay. But what I knew about gay was happy and you know, joyous. <laughs> ladies were gay and gentlemen were gay. Lords and ladies, they were all gay. You know, I mean, very happy and joyous. <laughs> so now this beautiful world, you perverted it. So I can't call you anymore, happy and gay. <laughs> Immediately you react, so what, uh, what do you mean? I said, no, no. <laughs> Look at the dictionary, man. What does it say? Gay, very happy fellow, joyous fellow. No, he said, to, please, stop it. I don't want you to call me gay. <laughs> so, you see the beautiful words, simple words, good words are being now perverted, prostituted. So once he's done that, he said, we are stupid. We are stupid. There are so many other words like that. You know, once they acquire other meanings, secondary meanings, and it becomes obnoxious, <coughs> you throw them away. In the origin, comrade. You know, comrade is a very good word. Comrade means friend, like a companion. You use that in America, you go to jail. <laughs> you know, think you're very funny. <laughs> What's wrong with the word comrade? If you look at the dictionary, nothing wrong with it. But as soon as you use it, comrade, comrade did that. This guy must be a communist. <laughs> taken up by the CIA for question. <laughs> so why do that to me? <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with the word. I said there's nothing wrong, wrong with the word father. But now it has acquired other connotations. 